after studying this module you shall be able to know the need to study population as a growing area of research identify the major causes of population rise effects of population challenge understand the state of population and its effect on india evaluate the approaches to deal with rising population population issues and introduction at the heart of issue with population lies the concern about ways to balance needs of people and resources available this need balance is also concerned with the outcome for future generations the very thought of resources falling short of people on planet has troubled scientists from times of aristotle and confucius as population grew across geographical regions and its strife due to depletion of resources started scientists had begun to associate famine war and pestilence with burgeoning population at the time when world population reached 450 millions nicolo michaeli predicted when every province of the world so teemed with inhabitants that they can neither subsist where they are nor remove themselves elsewhere the world will purge itself in one or another of these three ways of floods plague and famine each of the last world wars contributed to society by means of improvement in science and technology post the second world war the world population stood at 2500 million medical science became available to developing countries making a huge difference in the rate of population growth robert mcnamara then president of world bank said short of nuclear war itself population growth is the gravest issue the world faces if we do not act the problem will be solved by famine riots insurrections and wars effects of rising population wirth and simmel advocated that high population density heightens emotional stress which in turn affects people in their attitude towards other people generating adverse social effect simmel went on to suggest constant exposure to other people in vicinity could be extremely stressful to put in perspective psychology dictionary defines population as the entire amount of people in a rendered geographical location it also defines population density as the amount of individuals or other living beings per unit of space continuing on the hypothesis wirth and simmel made urban populace who are more likely to be exposed to dense population adopt hostile attitude towards others to handle the stress wirth considered population size population density and population heterogeneity to have profound consequences on people suggesting that high urban density leads to increased sense of competition irritation and loneliness milgram and fisher reformulated wirth and simmel's hypothesis with greater precision without taking away the initial suggestion high population density engulfs people with thoughts of being crowded causing violent reactions by inhabitants in comparison to people residing in not so populated places stockholms also suggested that there would be individuals suffering from anxiety and social withdrawal alongside tendencies for criminal acts john calhoun displayed these stress scenarios using rats the experiment showed that rats keep on dense populace displayed violence became territorial and aggressive and few also turned cannibalistic straub this is only reflective of the propositions made from earlier to be applicable not necessarily in same intensity or same result population changes are largely brought about by prevailing migration 
natality and mortality rate. Natality rate is number of births per 1000 population per year, whereas mortality rate is number of deaths per 1000 population per year. Migration is immigration or immigration of people in a locally per area per country. Biodiversity decrease. People have destroyed natural habitats for fuel, cultivation, cattle, grazing and building materials. Through centuries these activities have been damaging the ecosystem, but lower population allowed for compensation. In last century though, the magnitude of damage being done is causing desertification, salinity, leanness and natural degeneration of flora and fauna. Just to put into perspective, one species went extinct each day in 1980s and every hour in 1990s. In another half century, we would have lost half of a species from planet according to Liu. Forest reduction. Tropical forests which occupy 1.935 billion hectares in 1980 had 45% of it severely damaged according to statistics from Food and Agriculture Organization FAO. The vanishing tropical forest amounted to 11.3 million hectares each year at a decreasing rate of 0.58 percent from 1981 to 1985 and 16.78 million hectares each year at a decreasing rate of 1.2 percent in 1990. From 1950 to 1980, over half of the forest in the world were destroyed. Forest reduction single-handedly is the single biggest loss to this planet with devastating effect on life and its continuance. Tropical forests are lungs of world and its disappearance is already affecting us by increase in greenhouse effects. Greenhouse effects. Industrial revolution started onset of greenhouse gases in atmosphere at large scale. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was about 280 parts per million and methane was 715 parts per billion. In 1958, carbon dioxide was 350 ppm but up to 379 ppm in 2005. Increased population required fossil fuel causes industrial emission and other toxic waste are adding to the emergent situation. Greenhouse induced consequences include abnormal climate such as the El Nino and La Nina phenomena, frequent crop diseases and pest infestations, declining farm productivity and frequent natural disasters such as flood, drought and extreme temperature changes. Greenhouse effect is rising temperature of this planet and with each degree of rise world is losing polarized cap disappearance, receding glaciers in Himalayas, changing habitat for societies and fear of flooding in low-lying areas, air pollution. Apart from greenhouse gases, there is variety of toxic and particulate matter being dispensed in air across the world as a result of deep industrialization. These gases and particulate matter is major cause of illness in many parts of the world. Concentration of suspended particles is such that increasingly very industrialized cities wake up to complete darkness. Water pollution, one of the most valuable natural resource for life on this planet is also the one most exploited with ill effects already causing aggravation in many parts of the world. It is the potable water which is being used and abused with pesticides industrial waste and urban waste for construction to levels where 10% of the world population faces chronic freshwater shortage. This figure may rise if the population growth is uncontrolled. As in the case of air pollution, the increasing population calls for increasing number of factories. These factories lead to various kinds of pollution including water pollution, energy crisis, as we grow in population, 
our energy requirements are also scaling up. With traditional sources of energy drying up, our lifestyle stands threatened in absence of a viable, sustainable, renewable source of energy. With predictions that fossil fuel would not last another 50 years, the crisis is not far away from affecting the ways we live. Unemployment and illiteracy population also brings demands from people, demands for better life to urban utilities and at bottom of it lays job creation. We have already are short of resources and providing quality education and jobs subsequently is providing to be bigger task for government across the world. Rise in unemployment also leads to unrest among people, leading to criminality, rioting and other social effects which bring disharmony. Rapid industrialization and urbanization. Industrial revolution in Europe leads to similar approach across the world over the years. Today we stand deeply industrialized all over, which has its bane in causing population density to rise in urban centers and thereby becoming a population source. Across the world, cities along with the industries in and around have affected the environment adversely. The attraction of job and comforts lead to immigration, large number of which live in slums exposed to dangerous level of pollutants. Poverty, malnutrition and famine. Underdeveloped countries have also to face poverty and malnutrition with burgeoning population causing unnatural deaths and sense of gloom. Production, especially of food crops, has not kept pace with population, leading to imbalance skewed against people who cannot afford to purchase food. The absence of necessity for basic survival can yield several consequences including civil war, armed resistance, human trafficking and a further divide between developed and developing countries. Another very important factor that we need to look into the context of population is its relation to consumption. As it is not the population alone, contrary to popular belief, it is also the uncontrolled consumption which is also leading to unprecedented chaos, socially as well as environmentally. Population issues in India. Population explosion can never be boom, but growing population serves countries like Spain and Italy well, which are experiencing decline in population. But the same does not apply to African regions or countries like India and China. In countries like India, population explosion has led to deprivation and general imbalance in society, leading to societal unhappiness. With a general lack of resources, availability of it to individuals is increasingly becoming a difficult target to meet. Struggle for India has not slowed down, although it has experienced an unusually rate of growth since late 1990s. This is due to the population growth being way ahead of production growth. India has grown four times over the last century, one of the highest across the world. Large populace of India suffer from lack of various basic amenities, be it water, power, healthcare, education, housing, and many others. Compound it with rapid industrialization, it is witnessing societies which have extreme strata divide. These are potent grounds for criminality and unrest, apart from being exposed to various health issues. Rapid industrialization has also put burden of increased need for resources, which in turn affect countryside. 238.4 million in 1901, India became 1 billion in 2001. Almost all governance agendas are unable to reach out to millions living in countryside and even those who live in urban slums. India is classical case of effect population explosion can have in general well-being of a nation. Population growth and its consequences. Poverty. Poverty in India is primarily caused by high rate of population growth, which has been more of an explosion. 
rate of population growth has not allowed formulation and reach of basic amenities to people at large. It has denied a possibility of education for all, or sanitation, or health care, all of which expose a huge population to endless daily life issues. In addition, rampant urbanization and industrialization has taken away natural resources and damaged ecologies over large swath of land. In absence of planned future, people continue to have many children in hope of more income and add to the population. Migration In absence of sustainability in countryside and over-exploitation of their resources by urban India, people from rural areas immigration into urban centers in hope of better life. The fate in city is worse than rural areas, with these people living in overcrowded slums in unhygienic and dangerously polluted environment. Cities in India are continually expanding across the nation. Once again, it is people living at outskirts that are the poorest and first settlers, with no access to potable water, sanitation, and even clean air. Over-exploitation of natural resources. As mentioned earlier, with the growth in population, we are bound to provide amenities to aspiring young nation of people. Numerically, India requires many more power plants to provide power to one and all. It comes at cost of burning fossil fuels. Quest for minerals and resource has been ramped rampaging countryside, forest and ocean beds, all to build up good level of energy supply system. Apart from these, India has become fourth largest economy owing to its massive industrialization, which too requires immense amount of resources, exploitation of rivers to supply water to cities as well as to grow crops has led to many dams over rivers changing ecological change at many places, apart from displacing people from their homes. Similarly, growth in number of houses has increased manifold, leading to increased mining of iron ore, building cement factories, cutting of trees, all leading to environmental damage, which is which in turn impact rain and seasons affecting crop life cycle. Shrinking agricultural land. Agricultural land is depleting due to overuse, urbanization, and migration of people to urban centers. In order to provide shelter and increase production to cater to growing population, we are losing out our agricultural land. The increasing trend of farmers selling their land to builders in order to construct more high rises in urban areas is also changing the service profile of the nation. These factors, along with the ones discussed in Section 4, apprise of the various dire consequences of increasing population, not just for India, but also for the world at large. If we do not take cognizance of these aftermaths of overpopulation, humans as a species may just be heading for doom. To summarize, Population is growing rapidly at an alarming rate, especially in developing countries like India, as well as underdeveloped countries. Overpopulation has several adverse effects on climate, economy, society, and mental health of human beings. The deadly combination of overpopulation and overconsumption has brought us to a tipping point which can spell doom for all of us not too far in future. Pollutions of all kind, deforestation, global warming, shortage of all renewable resources, poverty, rising disparity between classes, human strife, rising diseases are all a byproduct of uncontrolled population rise. Corrective measures need to be taken at all possible levels to control this growing menace before it gets too late. Apart from measures initiated by individuals, groups, societal and organizations to curb this menace, government and policy makers across the globe need to come together 
to find a lasting solution, apart from creating awareness, offering incentives, and teaching sustainable methods, stringent policies to reduce overpopulation and overconsumption needs to be put in place irrespective of the population index of the country. Timely checks and introduction of corrective measures can bring us back from the brink of calamity. Psychologists have a crucial role to play in bringing about a change in the desired behavior. The problem of this magnitude and diverse ramification require a multidisciplinary approach. More resources need to be diverted for this issue as it alone can make or mar the success of any reform and policies on sustainability. Plainly speaking, population is defined in Dictionary of Psychology as the entire amount of people in a rendered geographical location, but it has many meanings and many ramifications, depending on the socio-economic status of a region. Since population is tied with the development of a country and sustainability of the environment, its in-depth study is very important. There are several disadvantages of overpopulation for both humans as well as our immediate environment. These include climate change and global warming, food and water insecurity, migration and refugee crisis, diseases, poverty and illiteracy to name a few major ones. Aristotle expressed concern about the rising population many centuries ago. He said, one would have thought that it was even more necessary to limit population than property. The neglect of this subject, which in existing states is so common, is a never failing cause of poverty among the citizens. And poverty is the parent of both revolution and crime. Similarly, famous physicist Albert Einstein said, overpopulation in various countries has become a serious threat to the health of people and a grave obstacle to any attempt to organize peace on this planet. The main factors affecting the population change are the birth rate, death rate, and migration. The birth rate is the ratio between births and individuals in a specified population and time. The death rate is a ratio between the number of deaths and individuals in a specified population and time. Migration is the number of people moving in, immigration, or out, emigration of a country place or locality.
According to United Nations report on world population 2012, it will stand at 8.1 billion by 2025 from its current 7.2 billion. At the growth rate, UN also states that it would reach 9.5 billion by 2050 and 11 billion by 2100. Same report predicts Nigerian population to have exceeded that of United States of America by 2050 and continue to become third most populous country by turn of our next century. Similarly, India will reach China's population by year 2028 with 1.45 billion people in each country. But China will see decrease in population after 2030, declining to 1.1 billion by end of this century, whereas India would stand at 1.5 billion. In comparison to the world population too, India and China would remain the biggest contributors to world population and it is a very grim picture. Scientists unarguably agree on catastrophic effects growing population will have on planet and people. However, much other changes are brought about to tackle the social and environmental issues. Population density is already peaking and is putting natural resources at great stress, affecting social growth for all. Advancements in medical science have taken mortality rate down quite heavily, with people living for much longer adding to needs. As the map shows, more than half of our country is living under dire economic conditions. As the studies show, amongst poor, the infant mortality rates are higher and hence they reproduce more children for the fear of losing many to malnourishment, disease or even birth complications. Also, in the absence of education and employment opportunities, their survival depends upon menial jobs and hence more the working hands, the better the income. This trend has led to a population boom among more economically backward population. Also, ignorance about family planning, early marriages, multiple pregnancies, and certain cultural beliefs and norms have only accelerated this growth. In countries like India, population explosion has led to deprivation and general imbalance in society, leading to societal unhappiness. With a general lack of resources, availability of it to individuals is increasingly becoming a difficult target to meet. Struggle for India has not slowed down, although it has experienced an unusually high rate of growth since late 1990s. This is due to population growth being way ahead of production growth. In terms of population, India has grown four times over in last century, one of the highest across the world. Large populace of India suffer from lack of various basic amenities, be it water, power, healthcare, education, housing, and many others. Compounded with rapid industrialization, it is witnessing societies which have extreme strata divide. These are potent grounds for criminality and unrest, apart from exposure to various health issues. Rapid industrialization has also put burden of increased need for resources, which in turn adversely affect countryside. 238.4 million in 1901 became 1 billion in 2001. Almost all governance agendas are unable to reach out to millions living in countryside and even to those who live in urban slums. India is a classic case that demonstrates the effect population explosion can have on general well-being of a nation.
Nearly at 7.2 billion, this planet is facing shortages and worsening of environment. As mentioned in an earlier section, population in developed countries is stabilized but is still growing at unchecked pace in poorer countries. In the last century, scientists and researchers have been proven correct about the adverse impacts unchecked population growth can bring about. Experts believe putting a check on growth rate will be a boon for the planet, both to recover from the state it has reached and also for its inhabitants. The four approaches that can help in stopping the menace of overpopulation, if not stop, includes empowerment of women and families, creating environmental awareness, working around and modifying social norms, and last but not the least, bringing all the stakeholders together to change policy decisions that affect governance, economy, as well as citizens. Social psychology, along with positive psychology, can help create programs to stimulate friendly behavior to tackle pan-global issue as big as population. It can elaborate on both sides of appeal for individuals by highlighting importance to values, attitudes, perceived responsibility, and at the same time, addressing their need for convenience, cost justification, and lifestyle. To enhance the role of social psychology in these processes, it seems essential to collaborate with researchers from other disciplines. The current importance and urgency require a multidisciplinary approach within which social psychology can make a useful contribution. To summarize, population and at the rate it is growing can have several negative consequences, not only on climate, economy, society, but also on mental health of human beings. All kinds of pollution, deforestation, global warming, depletion of renewable resources, rising social disparity, conflicts and diseases are a few consequences we need to be prepared for if we don't check population growth now. Several steps are needed to be taken in order to stop this menace. Creating awareness about sustainable methods, making strict laws and policies against violations, as well as introducing corrective measures can help to put brakes on this fast-moving debacle. Psychologists can play a due role in the process. A multidisciplinary and multi-pronged approach is needed to curb this menace that looms large on human civilization right now.